Hello, it's Jack and Dave, here to talk about quantitative easing. This quantitative easing sounds like a laxative product. Does it cause you to poop in large quantities? Quantitative easing is when the Federal Reserve poops excessive quantities of dollars from thin air. Some people say that it is not inflation, but it is inflation. If it is inflation, why don't they just call it inflation? Because inflation became a very bad word in the great inflation of the 1970s. So they call it quantitative easing to make inflation sound like it is not inflation. Just as economic stimulus sounds better than political pork barrel spending. Does this picture have something to do with quantitative easing? Yes. In the picture, a treasury is blue, a dollar is green, and a burn on key buck from thin air is red. The blue treasury shows a $1 sign, but does not circulate as money. In this picture, whatever the Fed has, does not circulate. Why are the burn on key bucks red in color? To show that they are from thin air, and that they steal purchasing power from the existing green dollars that people have done some bleeping work to get. There are two steps to the inflation. To start off, in column 1, the bank has $1. There is only $1 in circulation. In column 2, Uncle Sam creates a blue $1 treasury. That is step 1 of the inflation, but there is no inflation yet. In column 3, the bank purchases the treasury from Uncle Sam. Still no inflation, since only $1 is in circulation. In column 4, the Fed creates one burn on key buck from thin air. Still no inflation, since the burn on key buck is not in circulation yet. In column 5, the Fed purchases the treasury from the bank with one burn on key buck. That is step 2 of the inflation. There are now $2 in circulation. One that was worked for, and one from thin air. There is also tax involved. Then quantitative easing is not just Uncle Sam, the banks, and the Fed, swapping dollars and treasuries of equal dollar values? They swap dollars for treasuries. But that is mostly irrelevant. Inflation involves only two steps. The creation of the treasury by Uncle Sam, and the purchase of that treasury with money from thin air by the Fed. Then the banks are irrelevant to the inflation? Yes. This next picture shows what happens when you leave the banks out. Uncle Sam and the Fed do the inflation by themselves. Uncle Sam creates a treasury, and the Fed buys it with a burn on key buck. A brand new dollar, from thin air, is now in circulation. Then why doesn't Uncle Sam just sell the treasuries directly to the Fed? Trading of the treasuries allows the market to set interest rates. And the big banks get a pretty good deal since they get the inflation money first. But the first picture shows that the banks end up with the same amount of money as they started with. But the banks also make a lot of money buying and selling the treasuries and from interest. And they do give a lot of money to politicians. So they expect something in return. You also said that with quantitative easing or inflation, there is a tax involved. Yes. The treasury that Uncle Sam creates is not an obligation or debt of Uncle Sam. It is an obligation or debt of taxpayers. This picture shows the whole cycle. A treasury is created, sold, and paid off when it comes due. Taxpayers must pay the interest through tax since they are actually the ones who borrowed the money. But then one dollar goes out of circulation to the Fed and the inflation is gone. But Uncle Sam and the Fed cannot let that happen or they are back where they started. So Uncle Sam prints more treasuries and treasuries of longer duration as they are doing now and the Fed prints more burn on key bucks from thin air to buy them and the inflation keeps going. But the consumer price index does not show inflation. Inflation is not uniform at the start and does not show up in the consumer price index until later. The inflation now is mostly in house prices, propping up the housing bubble and in the value of some big Wall Street jackass banks, which might otherwise be bankrupt like Lehman Brothers. It is also in the stock market where the banks invest the money from thin air. As the money from thin air spreads, the inflation will spread to the consumer price index. But maybe the recession will be gone when the inflation expires. But the recession was caused by massive consumer debt, $14,000 billion, which caused consumers to stop buying new things. Consumers cannot start buying new things again until enough of their debt is repaid. 
but Uncle Sam has stepped in to continue borrowing and spending for them, further increasing their debt with national debt, which is now about $14,000 billion. So consumers now have about $28,000 billion of debt to pay. It is a debt crisis. So, if the Fed tries to take back the inflation money, another recession will start. Can you give an example? In the 1970s, there was a lot of inflation because we had gone off the gold standard and there was a recession at the same time. The inflation caused a lot of problems. When the Fed decreased the money supply and increased interest rates to control the inflation, it caused a bad recession in the early 1980s. But the Fed still seems to think that it can monkey with the money supply and interest rates and get something from nothing and take back what they did and everything will be fine. But it does not work out that way. And the Great Bernanke is a committed inflationist. What about their monkeying with interest rates? This next picture shows that. In 2000, the Fed was raising interest rates, shown as a black line, and that helped start a recession, as shown in yellow. So unemployment, shown with the red line, went up. So the Fed dropped interest rates during the biggest housing bubble in history, which had started in 1997 and which they did not know about because they were bleeping jackasses. The housing bubble went sky high because of the low interest rates. The Fed probably noticed the huge bubble in 2004 and started raising interest rates until the housing bubble burst in 2006 and another recession started. So then they dropped interest rates because of the problem, massive consumer debt, that they caused by monkeying with interest rates. They cannot just take back what they did with no problem. They are jackasses. Those interest rates changes look like a drunkard walking down the street and completely missing the biggest housing bubble in history. And they cannot even be sued for malpractice. I say, these chaps at the Fed, are we quite sure that they are not bleeping morons? They are bureaucrats central planners. I see. Professional morons. We have been brought to you today by quantitative easing laxative. It makes the Fed poop money from thin air in excessive quantities. And it may make you poop your pants.